Okay, so in this problem, we are told in a certain region of space, the electric field is constant in direction, say horizontal in the x direction, but its magnitude decreases from E equals 560 newtons per uh, coulomb at x equals zero to E equals 410 newtons per coulomb at x equals 25 meters. Determine the charge within a cubical box of side L equals 25 meters, where the box is oriented so that four of its sides are parallel to the field lines. So I went ahead and tried to draw what was going on in the figure. Uh, it basically looks like this. And what we have is electric field. It's going to be entering this side, right, uh, at E equals 560 newtons per coulomb. And then when it leaves, it's going to be E equals 410 uh, newtons per coulomb. And so what we're trying to find is the charge enclosed uh, in this box here, or in this cube. So the first thing you need to know is that the, the net electric flux is equal to uh, the charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught. So epsilon uh, naught is just a constant. It's equal to, I believe, 8.85 times 10 to the uh, minus 12. And it's going to be farads per meter. That's what the units are. So that's what epsilon naught is. But keep in mind, if we're trying to find for the charge enclosed, right, if I rewrite the formula here, you're going to have, if I multiply both sides, epsilon naught multiplied by the net electric flux inside this cube. So obviously, if we have a lepsilon, uh, epsilon naught, we need to find the net electric flux. And the way we do that is by using uh, this formula right here, which basically tells us the electric flux is equal to uh, the electric field multiplied by the surface area multiplied by cosine of theta. So uh, I'll explain what each of these are. Keep in mind what the net flux is. So the net flux is going to be adding up all the fluxes, right, from entering and leaving. So we're basically going to have to add the flux through each side of this, um, this uh, cube here. And so E is just the electric field. A is the surface area. So if we look at the electric field entering this side, uh, the surface area it would be entering would be this uh, side of this cube right here, right? So if we wanted to find the surface area, it would just be the height times the width. And we know it's 25 uh, by 25 by 25. So that's that. Um, and then theta, what theta is, it's the angle between the electric flux, the or sorry, not the electric flux, the electric field, the direction it's traveling in, uh, and, but the angle between that and perpendicular to the um, surface area. So if it was entering here, right, you can imagine it's entering, like I'm trying to draw, but imagine it's through this right here. The um, surface area perpendicular arrow would point opposite to it. So basically one would be going like this and the other one would be right on top of it going like this. So the angle between them would be 180 degrees. If they were right on top of each other, it would be just zero degrees, right? Because you can imagine it's like this. The angle would be theta, but if they're right on top of each other, this doesn't exist. So the angle between them is zero. Uh, you'll see how theta is when we solve this, but just know that's what it is. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to be finding the net electric flux. So we're going to have to add up the electric flux from uh, each of these, right? So caused by the electric field. Um, but when we do this problem, there's a little trick because we're only going to have to take into account it entering right here on this side and this side. So we're basically going to be adding up, I'll call it uh, flux one and flux two. So let me show you first why, right? Realistically, we'd have to add up every single side. Uh, but the reason why we don't actually have to do this side right here, this bottom side and this side and then the top, we don't have to do those sides. And the reason that is, is uh, as I said before, the flux, right, for each of the sides is E A times the cosine of theta. And let's just let's just think about it here. If it enters here like this, right, it's going. Let's just let me draw it like this. It's going to the side like this. If we wanted to look at the bottom one, it would point downwards like this. Okay, so if this is basically going to the side, and then downwards would be perpendicular to the surface area. And you always draw it going uh, out of the shape you're in. So in this case, we're looking at this cube. It would be pointing out of the shape. And so the angle here is 90 degrees. And so as I said before, this angle is right here. 
And if you see, it would be the cosine of 90. And you should know from trig, uh, cosine of 90 is zero. So really, there's no flux uh, if it's basically like that. So hopefully that makes sense. So this isn't going to have a flux. Uh, you can imagine it this way too. If it's going like this, this face would point out perpendicular like this. So it would kind of be basically the same thing, but just keep in mind it's in the 3D plane. The angle between them is still 90. So basically every single face except for this one right here and this one right here are 90. So uh, it doesn't. you don't actually have to add them. So just a little trick right there. So I'm not going to show you how to calculate those. Just keep in mind it would be... Um, it would be uh, just zero. So it doesn't actually matter. So really, we just have to worry about it entering this face right here and this face, and then add those up. So starting with the first face, we know when it enters, right? So this is, we'll call it the first one, is E A cosine of theta. So the electric field when it enters this side is 560. So that's what they tell us what it enters with, right? So it's entering with 560 there. Uh, and then we have the surface area of the face that it enters, which is this right here. Keep in mind that this is just 25 by 25, right? Because this is 25 and this is 25. So you would just be multiplying them there. So you can just write 25 squared, right? 25 times 25. Uh, and then the cosine of theta. So uh, as I said before, it's entering this way. And then surface would be pointing out directly opposite to it right directly opposite to it right i'm trying i can't really draw it that well but essentially it's just pointing opposite to it so the angle between them would be 180 so 180 degrees is theta and what you should know is cosine of 180 is just negative one therefore this basically just makes this uh negative so just keep in mind that's negative so what you have is minus 560 times 25 squared, which is minus 350000. Zero, 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 zero. So that's that. Uh, and keep in mind, another trick is, actually, let me just show you the second one first. So as again, it's Ea cosine of theta. So the electric field now, when it's leaving or entering this side of the face, or this face, is 410 so it's a little less once again the surface area is the same it's still 25 by 25 uh, because it's a cube and then you have the cosine of and so now as i said it's always pointing out so this one on this face the perpendicular to the surface area was this way but in this case it's this way so notice that they're actually right on top of each other now and if they're right on top of each other the angle between them is zero as i said before uh, therefore, it's just cosine of zero, which is one, you should know. So this one's actually positive. So notice that all that changed from theta is uh, the, the positive or negative sign. And so uh, let me just multiply this out. 410 times 25 squared is 256250. Uh, but the thing to keep in mind is if it enters, you basically always put it negative. So if the electric field is entering the face, right? Like this, it's positive, or sorry, it's negative, And if it leaves, it's positive. So that's just a quick rule to do it. You don't actually have to do all this cosine stuff. Uh, but yeah, and now we have the two fluxes. So we would just add them minus 35. I believe that's 350,000. Yeah. So there we go. And then plus 256250. So let me add these two values. Obviously, we're going to get a negative answer. Uh, and we get minus 93750. Uh, and then now we have the net flux. So it's really just a matter of plugging it into this equation here. So we we're going to take this net flux and multiply it by epsilon naught. So let's go ahead and do that now. Um, so we have 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 multiplied by minus 93750. So let me plug this in and we'll see what we get. And okay, just making sure it's right. Yeah. 
Cool. So you're going to get the charge enclosed is equal to minus 8.29. Uh, I'm just going to round it to 8.3 times 10 to the minus 7. Uh, we're dealing with charge, so we have coulombs here. Uh, but essentially, the charge enclosed is minus 8.3 times 10 to the minus 7 coulombs. Uh, and yeah, so that's your answer. Uh, just the main takeaways from this problem is just memorize these formulas here for the charge enclosed. Uh, and then this uh, electric flux formula is really important. Um, and then just the main takeaway of this theta angle here, you need to understand that basically the trick is if it's leaving, positive. If it enters, it's negative. And then uh, also, obviously, you got to understand when not to count it. So the 90 degree ones, we didn't have to include any of these faces here. Uh, but yeah, so uh, just keep that in mind when you solve these problems and you should be good. But uh, this right here is going to be your answer. And uh, hopefully you found this uh, video useful.